Uh-huh. I just throw it up in my story sometimes that I'm doing free sessions. I had an email list and I just sent out that I'll, I'll do free sessions. You done like an actual competition for free sessions, didn't you? Like free yeah. coaching for a year. You can also, I say to people in that last gym I was working in, because the gym itself was dead and there was no members like Cuba who ended up quitting. I was like, mate, there was a, there was a house in the state, but one of the biggest new yeah. build houses in the states I've ever seen, loads of them were flats. And he was like, I can't get people to come in online. And I'm like, just go around and... Like, if I was struggling, I would have just went around and just asked all of them if they wanted a, yeah. in person se- like a, a free in-person session. So you could do it like that as well. It doesn't have to be online. Another thing is, if you've simply got Instagram or a phone, just go through every single contact and every single Instagram page you've got and just message them. If anything, that would be a good way to build confidence. You go to four of your best mates here, oh, can I do an in-person session with all of you and I don't need you as a client? Aye. Then it gets you better at the free sessions. Mm-hmm. People don't know who you are, so it's, but how do you how do you build trust with someone in confidence? You're not going to do that by asking for money right on that no, no. first interaction. So it's like maybe like a feel-good post of, here, I'm looking for a couple of people to train for free to refine my skills. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start with mobility or I'm going to start with whatever it is that you, that you want to break down. How many times have you had a PT come to your door and ask you if you want to do a free session with them and be like strictly no strings attached? How many people have wanted to try PT and just have no... Never know. To, they they've know. got the perception that it's going to be wild, too expensive for them. It's not right for them. They're not the type of person that goes to the gym. You've done it flyering, haven't you? Done flyering and done, um, and then just kind of like engaging with conversation as we were saying last time, but sitting at the front desk and speaking to people, but no with the intent of trying to get them as a client. Just here, you're in the gym, you're working on yourself. Class to see you here again. So structuring a free session, I think this is where honestly, I think if you do it from an assessment type of thing, like where you're assessing movement like within that same session if you assess movement how they move just now to doing a bit of different drills different exercises and comparing the start to the end that's the best way of doing a free session because you show your value you build your trust you show your worth and you actually show that PT and isn't just about getting the muscles sore or all that sort of thing I think MD can do that for me that's not that's never been my style I don't think it would be for a majority of people listening to this you want to help people long term so I would look at the main movement patterns you think about it like what's the what's the alternative do you want to train back like, cool let's train back so shit like, what value are you giving other than counting rep sets and maybe doing exercise demonstrations you as a coach yes there's a there's different levels to it so your your accountability and all that sort of stuff but you're not getting any of that out in a back training session whereas where well, you're literally you just putting your finger and getting I pull your people in pull your elbow with my finger feel that there and one two three uh, and, I, and then the more confident you get i'm confident i can do any sort of session with someone and get them to see some sort of value in it but that's just confidence in your craft over time you pick up in all those cues and more people that you go through so assessment wise i would keep it very simple Everyone sits up, stands up off the couch and everyone's always dealing with some sort of hip tightness or lower back, strain, pain, whatever you want to call it. So giving relief around your hamstrings, uh, around their bum, their, their lower backs. You also ramble like fuck on your first one and you're like, man, I'm overwhelming this cunt with too much information. He's like, I cool. back and shoulders. He walked into the gym thinking, I am, I'm not too bad and left going, I'm fucked. <laughs> I can't do anything. Uh, so I would keep, I try and keep the session simple, try and keep the assessment simple. Probably work on one or two joints, so either shoulders, lower back, ankles is usually the, the three main ones that I'll, I'll look at testing wise first you can you can look up tons of movement tests I like a squat test and I always film it from the side leans over too much if someone stays upright and if you're listening to this and you're like I have no idea if I'd be confident to do that look up squat assessments how to get better at squats look at like train yourself on different coaching cues from everything that's there on the internet I'd get everyone just to sit in a squat mm-hmm. and just see if they can do it and I'm watching that straight away and then from there if they can't do it I'm straight away talking about right. This is how this is the protocol for you to be able to sit in a squat, and that would be something if you come on with me or not over the next twelve weeks. I'd be expecting you to do a pretty good goblet squat by doing X, Y, and Z, and then I'll show them that I'll do the free session. But I'm always speaking about what they can. I'm giving them stuff they can go yeah. away to do as well if they've done it on their own. Or I also talk about if you're with me. It's hard to do in your very first one, but if you've done five, six, or seven. You can make estimates of like if somebody's hips tight and they've got shit ankle mobility and they can't really squat, then most likely you can make a con- you can draw a conclusion. And go, you probably deal with a wee bit of lower back tightness, and they're like, "Fucking hell, how do you know that?" So like, I can see your movement. Do, do you know? But that happens because of 
Um, if you're sat, I take it you work behind a desk all day. How the fuck did you know that? You're like, ah, right, cool. You almost be you like a guru to them. You're like, this guy is a genius. Yeah, uh, yeah. See, be fair, you could yeah, always nah. just go that that down job, is it? And just without <laughs> even looking at them. And it's, it's, it's always a good banker because <laughs> most <laughs> people <laughs> fuck. You look Mo- me up. Most people do, but uh, it's like, oh my god, you know? Uh, how do you know? But you, you start like. <laughs> This is why if you're doing an assessment with every single person that you have an interaction with, you do get good at building up this bank of history of going, that is a common problem with these types of people. And yeah. there's nothing more powerful than that. So I know, I know, like, if I video someone from Sidon as well, which is an R good tool, I might not know the very first time if this is my first client here. And I pause his squat video at the bottom and I see his heels coming up. And I'm like, why is his heels coming up? Just do a wee search. Heels coming up in a squat. And that's how you properly learn the craft of becoming a really good trainer but yeah if you're constantly speaking to them throughout that like you're just reinforcing your value to that client you're reinforcing like man this this guy's good and it yeah it might be about weight loss fat loss muscle gain whatever it is but if you start going like can you see how if we relieve tension and the, the chronic pain that you're dealing with that you could move better and if you move better you're gonna feel stronger and if you feel stronger then we can do all these other movements it's going to aid with your fat loss and that sort of stuff so i always said i learned so much more just by doing one-off sessions with people than I do working with people constantly. You'll learn loads in the first four weeks of working with someone, then the longer you work with that person, the less and less you learn. It's not a business strategy to do, just keep working with people one-off. You would never want to be the guy that just does one-off sessions with people. But if you've done like three, three sessions a week, that's so much, that's so much you can learn.